She knew that he would be back. He had to work things out his own way, and he was assured of his prior claim on her affections. His arrogance at first astounded her, then finally could be forgiven in her anticipation of the pleasure they both knew would again be shared, even if it had to be postponed a whole year. Then she remembers what the scene had reminded her of. The sky with its leaden clouds, the wet spray of the sea, the thump of surf against the rocks. The two weeks had fled past them. She didn't remember a single argument, not even the kind of maneuvering for brief privateness that people do when they are together constantly. At this remove, it seemed impossibly idyllic. Looking at those two weeks against the backdrop of later events, she was at a loss to understand the nature of his feelings. She herself felt like a fool thinking about it, deceived and humiliated. But she also felt a deep sadness. There was no denying her own happiness and sense of completion at the time. Had he ever felt such things in her presence for even a single moment? She wondered. On the way back to the city, she was careful not to touch him as they sat in the back seat of the car. When he unconcernedly, or calculatingly, she couldn't tell which, shifted his position so that his knee grazed her thigh, she carefully disengaged herself from contact. By the time they arrived in town, he occupied most of the seat, and she had squished herself into a cramped, tight ball. She was enraged. She stumbles out of the theater, her disgust with the film and actual nausea drives her body into the street. She recalls roughly the location of the hotel and starts walking in that direction. Her gut burns, and she has to keep spitting out the bitter saliva that collects in her mouth. The streets are dimly lit and deserted, the houses shuttered and silent. She wonders if she will find the hotel in time. At a certain point, not having seen any familiar landmarks for a while, she realizes that she is lost and experiences a powerful exultation. 
The discomfort of her body, the presence of the night, her solitude, all give her an acute sense of the moment. She finds a vacant grassy lot, gropes her way past the open door of a parked truck, and vomits. Relieved, she straightens up and sees the looming outline of a huge gas storage tank and remembers standing in the street across from the hotel that morning, watching two men on a scaffold painting the tank orange. She then knows that she is now only a block away. Almost regretfully, she goes directly to the hotel, willing to take care of her body, reluctant to terminate being lost in the sleeping town.